What are you doing tonight? I'm studying for the organic chemistry test over the functional groups. We have to memorize them and be able to tell how they will behave in the reaction. Wow, that sounds difficult. Or we can all just watch the football game tonight. No, Al, we have a test tomorrow, and you have to study too. What are the names of the functional groups? Uh, what is a functional group? Okay, let's start with the basics. Amin, would you mind looking that up for us? Sure. Okay, so I googled the definition of a functional group, and it states that a functional group is a group of atoms within molecules that have properties regardless of other atoms present in a molecule. They are also responsible for chemical reactions. That sounds like gibberish to me. Basically, a functional group is important because it causes a molecule to exhibit predictable behavior. Also, I remember our professor saying functional groups play a role in biological molecules such as DNA, proteins, carbohydrates, and lipids. I think I get it. No, no, no. Yep. Are you sure? I'm positive, because I just lost an electron. So what are the types of functional groups? There are so many. Alcohols, ethers, carboxylic acids, and many more. That's funny. How do you tell the difference between them? Well, many of them have carbon and hydrogen atoms, so that's not a good predictor. You want to look for oxygen or nitrogen atoms, and the type of bonds between atoms, single, double, or triple. Hey guys, why did carbon marry hydrogen? They bond from the moment they met. The easiest functional groups to explain are alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. They are distinguished by the type of bond between carbon atoms. They are triple bonds, double bonds, and single bonds, respectively. These make the chemical compounds harder to break apart. The name is bond. Carbon. Carbon bond. Ow! Stay focused! The nitrogen groups are next. Amines and amides. These groups will always contain a nitrogen atom that's bonded to a carbon chain and two hydrogen atoms. That's exactly what an amine is. An amide, on the other hand, also has an oxygen atom double bonded to the carbon. They're both more polar than hydrocarbons, but less polar than the other functional groups, which makes them perfect for RNA's productions of proteins because they bond to form amino acids. I'm tired of chemistry, so I'm going to sleep. Good nitrogen. Sleep nitrogen. You're right, like a bond angle of a molecule with trigonal bipyramidal molecular geometry. These next groups are more simple. Ethers are a single oxygen atom inserted into a carbon chain. They're the smelling group. Most things contain ethers. Alcohols have a carbon bonded to a hydroxide. They're extremely polar because of their unbonded electrons. Ketones have one oxygen atom double bonded to a carbon atom that is bonded to two R groups. Aldehydes are similar, but instead of two R groups, one of these bonds must be with a hydrogen. The structure of carboxylic acid is essentially a ketone bonded with an alcohol group. An ester is created when a carboxylic acid reacts with an alcohol group and an acid catalyst. Its structure is like a ketone bonded with a single oxygen atom that bonds to an R group. Atoms. Can't trust them because they make up everything. Do you understand functional groups now? Yes. I think I even understand them now. Good luck on your test tomorrow.